Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagan Maradian here at the NATO Engages meeting in Washington, D.C., sponsored by the Atlantic Council, the German Marshall Fund, and the Munich Security Conference to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Atlantic Alliance that celebrates its birthday on April the 4th. We're here on the 3rd on the waterfront and talking to Congressman Jerry Connolly, Democrat from the great state of uh, Virginia, who is the chairman of the uh, Oversight uh, Subcommittee in the House, uh, but also since 2013, if I'm right, the chairman of the parliamentary, uh, NATO Parliamentary uh, committee. I know Mike Turner was here as well, the congressman, a Republican congressman, former Dayton mayor, uh, Republican who is here as well, who's an active participant uh, in the group. Uh, sir, you just heard Jens Stoltenberg joint, address a joint session of, of Congress. Um, you know, what what messages did you take away? You know, how do you think he did in, in his address? Uh, and did, did it, you know, is, is it moving actually the most important single member, which is President Trump, who everybody is most concerned about, about the future of the Atlantic Alliance? Well, first of all, I think uh, Mr. Stoltenberg um, hit it out of the ballpark to take an American metaphor. Uh, he touched all the right notes uh, and uh, reminded his audience uh, that, uh, frankly, the United States benefits from NATO a lot. And interestingly, uh, when Article 5 was used, invoked, the one time, the beneficiary was the United States. It was a response by our NATO allies after 9-11 to join us in responding in Afghanistan. So uh, we, we've benefited, we've kept the peace for 70 years in Europe, where two world wars started uh, and millions of lives were lost. And so that's not a mean accomplishment. And sometimes, you know, we don't appreciate what was avoided as much as what happened. But in this case, what was avoided was really a very important accomplishment. And we were able to do that. And it was a U.S. initiative. It was Harry Truman that signed the documents here in Washington 70 years ago. Uh, and uh, again, uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg reminded us all of that. Um, he reminded us, too, that having defeated the Soviet Union in the Cold War, uh, we still face challenges, including a resurgent Russia uh, that has had, you know, hegemony in its mind, uh, has illegally tried to annex Crimea, is illegally occupying parts of Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova. So we do face a threat, and we need to collectively respond to that. We also have shared values, as he reminded us, and that's increasingly important in uh, NATO as we evolve and mature, that uh, we, we share democratic values, and that's a beacon to other nations. And what's really interesting is lots of other nations want to join NATO. I don't know of any nations that want to join Russia. And that's that he reminded us of that. So I, I think it was a, a wonderful speech, uh, and it was very well received by Congress on both sides of the aisle. But I think over and above the Secretary General's speech, what's so important is the fact that on a bipartisan basis, he was invited to a joint session of Congress to give that speech on the 7th. He's the first Secretary General of NATO ever to be invited to do that. And I think there's a real symbolism and a real statement by Congress in that. And it's really important to remember, we're a separate but co-equal branch of government. So yeah, President Trump is an important part of the audience, but so are we. And we're also an important part of making foreign policy. And today, I think we made a statement about foreign policy. It was pretty important. Um, do you uh, see, um, are you as concerned about the future of the Atlantic Alliance as some people are? There appears to be a generational divide. Our generation is more concerned about the future of the alliance, for example, than young people who think that whether whatever happens, it's going to be still a strong and vibrant uh, relationship. Are you that confident that things are going to work out all right, or are you more uh, fall into the more concerned category? And if so, what are the things specifically that both sides of the Atlantic have to do to ensure the strength of this uh, alliance that is um, under criticism from a very, very powerful single voice? I don't think you can ever take anything for granted. And I think the uh, defeat of uh, Soviet communism and the uh, collapse of the Berlin Wall did not happen by, you know, good intentions. It happened by strong will, defensive preparedness, and a collective agreement of NATO members that deterred and ultimately helped defeat the Soviet Union. Uh, and so, you know, we face, as I said earlier, you know, we face th threats in contemporary Europe today, and we need to be prepared to meet those threats. You, you, you can't be complacent, and you've got to invest in the future. 
and uh, you know some relatively modest investments have big payoff. If you don't make those investments, then you're going to face some real problems that will require a lot more than a modest investment. So, in you know making that modest investment today, I think has big payoff for the future, and I think that's an important lesson for maybe the younger generation that didn't live through the Cold War to uh, to try to come to appreciate. Are, are you concerned, though, that some of the president's actions may have more lasting damage? I mean, for example, we heard the vice president say it's important to get NATO to work together against China. There are some in the audience who observed, well, but you're irritating the very nations you need to partner with you against China. Um, is there concern in your mind that there could be more lasting uh, rift that could develop between the United States and some of its closest allies over some of this rhetoric and the pressure? I am very concerned that uh, President Trump who came into office with very little understanding about the relationship with our allies and seemingly little appreciation for it, can do some real damage. He's done some short-term damage, no question about it. Um, but do I believe that we're resilient enough that we can recover from this and survive it and indeed hopefully strengthen those ties uh, in the future? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I don't think it has to be lasting damage. Uh, if this turns into an eight-year tenure and as opposed to a four-year tenure, come back and see me then. And one last question. Do you think F-35 should go to Turkey if Turkey acquires the S-400 missile system? I think Turkey's going to have to come to grips with some decisions it has chosen to make and understand that they have consequences. And I think the, four uh, the F-35 is very much at risk if they proceed as they say they're going to with the Russian anti-missile defense system. Jerry Connolly, chairman of the subcommittee on oversight in the House and uh, chairman of the uh, NATO Parliamentary uh, Committee. Sir, thanks very much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Bob.